What's going on, Steve? Right, how you doing? How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Good to see you. You too. So uh, we're doing a graph today. That's right. And uh, Something it's not you've... just any graph, right? Right. Yes. Well, you've never done a graph, right? This is this... no. I've never done a graph. Uh, so. Um, yeah, Trent and I were talking a little bit um, over the last couple of months. We were trying to put something together and we we're trying to think about something. Trent is a far more experienced cider maker than I am. And uh, I have never, I've, I've been wanting to do something that blends those uh, those like ciders and meads and et cetera, et cetera, together into something that, that works with uh, a barley based beverage. Um, and so we came up with the idea of doing a graph. And uh, today, well, Trent, I'll let you uh, talk about uh, how we're going to approach this because it's going to be exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go about it, but I think probably the most common way is you brew a beer and you have apple juice and you mix them together and you add in some yeast. Um, the one I've done before, I've only done one of these before, and it was a Saison. So Saison based beer with some apple juice and it came out really nice, super dry, easy to drink. Um, had this great like just combo of maltiness and apple sugary flavor it was really interesting but i when i finished it i was very curious like what other styles could work you know could a stout work could um you know a pilsner work so um when i kind of reached out to you i was like what if we kind of try something different where we pull in a bunch of styles and we kind of randomly select one and just brew with whatever style pops up for us so do you think this works particularly well in certain uh like maybe like a belgian style over certain other styles you know, it comes from like a book, right? It came from a Stephen King novel. So I think there is a lot of open up to interpretation. I think a lot of people say like it's described as being a really strong drink. So, uh, you know, maybe a stronger style beer might okay. work well. So with that, I loaded in um, a kind of a wheel of fortune of some BJCP styles. Not all of them, I eliminated some. Let me share it with you and then we can start the randomization. Let's give it a go. This is for your beer selection. Ready? All right. Three, two. Uh. Old Ale. Really? All right. So have you brewed an Old Ale before? Um. So I've... That's an interesting one. Um, so I have brewed something like an old ale. I made a Christmas ale uh, in the style of an old ale, although it was a much lighter uh, and lower ABV version of it. So yeah, it's like a malty, rich English beer kind of, you know, very heavy on like the, the toffee character, but not quite a barley wine. Um, I could see that blending really well, actually. That's really interesting. Because, you know, apple juice ferments really dry. So I feel like that can kind of cut through maybe some of that maltiness. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that could be good. That's interesting. So here's the other question, too, is um, if we're blending apple juice in with the wort and fermenting it together, do I use an English yeast? Do I use a different yeast? Do I Because the English yeast is going to, you know, it's it's not going to cut. Um, it's not going to ferment that malto trio. So it's going to get down to like 10, 20 something. Or do I use a more aggressive strain and get it real dry and get it real strong? I can't wait to see what you come up with. <laughs> yeah, this will be fun. Let's do mine. Let's see what I get. Hopefully nothing too crazy. <laughs> I think it's fun that we kind of got like pretty different styles and it'll be interesting yeah, to kind of like yeah. taste them side by side and see how they compare. Yeah. All right, that was fun. So now I'm gonna talk about how I'm gonna make an old ale, right? Well, for the sake of keeping this video relatively short, I'm actually not gonna talk about how I designed the recipe for the old ale. You're just gonna to have to see the old ale video I'm gonna put out to discuss that recipe. So the old ale I'm making is gonna be an interesting beer. It's, it's basically uh, a characteristically defined by a significant addition of sugars, which bumps up the ABV, but there's one sugar in particular that's pretty standard across uh, old ale recipes, and that is black treacle. Uh, which is like a really thick, rich molasses-like sugar. It's a little different flavor than molasses, a little bit more intense, I think. Um, and it's definitely a lot thicker uh, when it comes out of the can. So that is gonna, that sugar addition is gonna add a lot of complexity, similar to like a dark candy sugar addition to a Belgian ale um, that's going to ferment out and leave some decent flavor behind. Now, the other question I have here is what kind of apple juice do I wanna use and uh, what kind of yeast do I wanna use? So apple juice wise, I think I'm gonna go with Honeycrisp. From what I understand, Honeycrisp actually leaves a little bit more apple juice flavor, uh, which will be nice to see. I think that's gonna help complement the sugary sweetness of this old ale. 
Um, at the same time though, it is going to ferment a lot drier than we expect. And that, as Trent said, is gonna cut through the maltiness of this beer. I'm gonna brew up my old ale and I'll show you that in this video. And then I'm gonna basically take three gallons of that wort and add three gallons of Honeycrisp apple juice to it. So it's actually a six gallon batch. Now, if you wanna replicate this yourself, I'm gonna take the recipe I made at Beersmith and scale it down to a three gallon size to help make it more replicable. Um, if you choose that you wanna brew this thing yourself. That being said though, I would really wait until you see the Old Ale video because that's really where everything is gonna to come together. Um, Cause it's gonna be a larger batch of Old Ale that I'm making. Once again, fermentables, I'm mean, using three gallons of Old Ale wort and three gallons of Honeycrisp apple juice. Uh, for hops, it's just going to be the same 60-minute bittering addition that I'm adding to that old ale, which is about 50 IBUs worth of nugget for bittering. Um, higher IBUs on this one, mainly because we want to make sure that we get a good balance to that maltiness. Um, and an important piece of that balance is getting a solid bitterness to counteract all of that sweetness. So for the water profile, well, considering half of it's apple juice, that's kind of up in the air. Um, but the other half of the batch is gonna be using that Old Ale water profile, which is rather high in sulfates, actually. And I did that on purpose, actually, and that's to balance out that sweetness once again. Higher sulfate content makes it feel a bit drier, which is gonna help keep it from being cloyingly sweet, and I think that could uh, be a very real risk for this Old Ale. And last but certainly not least, yeast uh, for this guy is going to be Nottingham. I'm choosing a highly attenuative English ale yeast because I wanna boost that alcohol content and I, I know that Nottingham is a very clean fermenter. I get a little cautious when I throw a traditional English strain into a high gravity wort because they tend to go absolutely nuts with esters. And I don't necessarily want this to be a very estery beer. Using Nottingham pretty much guarantees I'll have a relatively clean fermentation without too many excessive esters. And also I know Nottingham is absolutely up for the task when it comes to the OG of this fermentation. It is capable of fermenting maltodryos, which means it will get a little drier, uh, probably than your typical old ale, but then Again, this is a Groff, which is a made-up beer style, and uh, there's really no guidelines for it, so dry it is. Anyway, guys, I'm going to give you an abbreviated brew day, and we'll get this thing started. So I'm kind of cheating in this video because I've already made this beer. Um, and I'm telling you kind of how I designed it, uh, but I never actually got around to filming the fermentation part of this video. So uh, really quickly, 
I chose to use Nottingham Ale Yeast and I fermented it nice and low at 62 Fahrenheit. I pitched two packets in and this helps reduce the amount of esters that you're gonna get from the fermentation. Especially with these English yeasts, they can go a little nuts when they're fermented warm or if they're under pitch and I wanted to avoid both of those things, uh, especially with this higher OG. So that's why I chose to do that. But really, Groff is a very undefined style. You can really do anything you want with a style and that means that you can really use any yeast you want. You want to use a Belgian yeast, go for it. You want to use a Kvike yeast, go for it. You want to use a, a Saison yeast. Maybe uh, considering that it is half cider, a cider yeast or a wine yeast might actually be a pretty cool idea. I'm really curious to find out what Trent used for his yeast and how he built his recipe. Um, and I'm actually about to find out because I'm here at HomebrewCon 2023 right now in San Diego and uh, Trent's like right down the road. So we're gonna meet up and we're gonna taste our beers together in person and I cannot wait. So the fermentation overall went very well. Uh, in about 10 days, it fermented all the way down to 1008. That's not too surprising considering that I used a relatively aggressive yeast strain for it. After I confirmed that final gravity, I packaged it in a keg and I left it in my kegerator for another two weeks uh, as I was traveling. Once I got back, I went ahead and I canned some of it and took it with me to San Diego for Trent to try. So this brew is called Identity Crisis and it comes in at 6.5% ABV and 50 IBUs. It pours a slightly hazy dark amber color um, with some red undertones and uh, doesn't really have that much of a head or head retention in general. It's pouring with a slight ivory color. I think the issues with the head are due more so to the packaging process that I used as opposed to the actual carbonation uh, since there was a decent amount of head space in that can after I packaged it. Good to see you finally in Good person. To see you. I know. This is awesome. <laughs> finally, we are together. You're in uh, sunny San Diego. So. <laughs> Not so sunny today, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with uh, mine here. Okay. So this is uh, the Graf that was blended with, or well, that was brewed with an old ale wort. So uh, to catch you up, basically, um, so I brewed this old ale in an eight gallon size batch. Okay. Um, it was like. 50 IBUs and I think it ended up being like an OG of like 1070 something. It was okay. pretty strong. Yeah. Um, the OG on this guy was actually a lot lower than I anticipated. Yeah, it got it pretty dry. It's about 6.5%. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. So I'll, uh, I'll let you have the first sip and uh, <laughs> What an intro. <laughs> Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Yeah. <laughs> I would say like the first, it's like a, an interesting combination of like apple and orange almost. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of apple. Um, <laughs> and what, remind me, what kind of apple juice did you use? So I used honey crisp apple juice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, to kind of catch you up with the old ale piece of it, that's like a darker kind of ale. It has uh, black treacle in it actually, mm. which is like a molasses kind of thing. So basically, right. Um, it's just like really rich malty beer that has a ton of sugar components to it. Yeah. And then um, I used Nottingham yeast on it since mm. I didn't want it to be too estery. Yeah. Especially with that OG. Um, and yeah, this is what happened. So. It, it's almost giving me. It doesn't me, agree, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> it's interesting, and it's almost giving me like caramel apple, and maybe that's from the yeah. treacle, kind of adding that like, I don't know, unique character to it. But I'll take another sip here and see. It's, it's hard to describe, but like that weird, like, not weird but in a bad way, but like a unique caramel apple, orange, like fruit salad almost <laughs> in a beer, which sounds crazy, but yeah, it works. I don't know, like, yeah. I could drink a ton of it, you know, but I think that yeah. was part of like when we like first started this out. That's like, part of the roulette, yeah. <laughs> let's spin this wheel and see what it lands on. Yeah, in my um, opinion, I don't think the flavors really agree very well either. Yeah. It's, um, it's like, like you said at the beginning, I rewatched uh, our footage at the beginning here. Yeah. Um, you said that the uh, apple juice might cut through the maltiness, yes. and it does, yeah. but it's very aggressive in how it cuts through the maltiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not like overly acidic, like, in my opinion. No, like, I like I the think honey for that. Well, when we try mine, you'll see that <laughs> it cuts through it so much that it is very acidic. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting, it was an interesting experiment to kind of see yeah. like what styles could work. Uh, if you were to do it again, would you change the style or would you do something different? Yeah, I think so. Um, so I think I could look at this two ways. I could look at it as if I were to just kind of pick whatever type of beer I wanted and also what I would do to make this particular blend better. Um, 
for this one, I'd say probably maybe only use like one or two gallons of apple juice yeah. to really keep that from being too acidic and you know uh, not really agreeing. And I'd also change up the yeast and I'd make something less attenuative. Yeah. Um, but if I wanted to do a brand new style of beer, um, honestly, I'd go with like a, a Belgian triple, I think would be pretty cool. That would be interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. you get like some of those apple fruity notes in that anyway, and it can blend right. a lot more seamlessly. Yeah, maybe a bit of like the phenol character, kind of giving that like apple spice, like mm -hmm. pie character. I don't know, it could be interesting. But. I would say not a failure, but a learning uh, yeah, experience yeah. for sure. No, I agree. It's definitely not something. I mean, I could, I personally could drink a pint of this probably, but I wouldn't order it like over everything else. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this one. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm excited to try yours. I'm really curious to know what you did and how that, uh, how you went through the process. I think you'll find it was a very similar process for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Steve, thanks for joining me on this like crazy graph yeah. journey. Uh, thanks hopefully for, uh, it was fun. <laughs> thanks for the idea. It was awesome. So, yeah. yeah, it was a super great time and uh, definitely pushed me a little bit out of my comfort zone, I think, which yeah, is good. always good. So. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And it'd be fun to like try doing this Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Misery thing <laughs> again, maybe with some other <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, experimental stuff. Should we just like get out of here and get to Homebrew Con then? Yeah, let's, right. uh, I think we have a lot more beer to drink this weekend. So yeah, yeah. Uh, started off right yeah. and uh, yeah, let's go to Homebrew Con. So cheers. cheers. Cheers.